Today, we want to take a break from our usual recipe-driven videos and really zero in on stir-fry technique. We'll show you four different ways that you can stir-fry. First, a basic ingredient-by-ingredient stir-fry. Second, how you do the same thing, only without a wok. Third, how you'd stir-fry with all the ingredients together. And finally, the common restaurant technique of pre-cooking the meat with a brief deep-fry. To minimize confusion, we'll be showing all this with one dish, a simple, classic, home-cooking stir-fry of pork and chilies called qingjiao rou si. But before we get into it, a quick word on heat source. See, if you talk to a lot of people in the West, they'll insist that it's somehow impossible to stir-fry without a high-powered restaurant stove, which, to be frank, is nonsense. This is the little burner that we use for these videos, and this is the flame it makes. No jet engine here, if I've done my math right, it's a shade under 10,000 BTUs. By comparison, a Western home stove usually clocks in around 7,000, Chinese home stove 14,000, a Western professional range 30,000, and those Chinese restaurant jet engines 100,000 or even higher. Now those stoves are cool, but much more important is your technique. So don't fret, if you've got a wimpy range, you're still well within the margin of error for most stir-fries. So to get started, we're using 150 grams of pork loin. Pork is vastly easier to work with than beef or chicken, so if you're new to stir-frying, start with pork. Now we'll be slicing this into slivers against the grain. The grain is the direction of the muscle fibers. What you want to do is slice down perpendicular to those fibers. So first cut into the pork to get roughly 2 millimeter wide sheets, and for some stir fries, you could stop there, but for this one, we'll stack all those up and cut into them about three millimeters apart to get some slivers. Transfer that over to a bowl, and we can marinate. This sort of marination is sometimes called velveting in English, and it's critical to a good stir fry. For this amount of meat, we'll add in a quarter teaspoon salt and a half teaspoon sugar. This makes the meat juicier, just like a dry brine would. We'll also toss in a half teaspoon liaojiu, aka Shaoxing wine, and if you can't find this sort of wine, most people suggest dry sherry, but I'd personally reach for some sort of rice wine instead. Next up is a half teaspoon cornstarch. This is crucially important as it'll coat the pork and prevent moisture loss. And I personally like to mix the starch with the wine before tossing them in to prevent clumps. Then to season, we'll add in a quarter teaspoon soy sauce. Here we're using dark soy sauce for color, but regular soy sauce would work just fine. Once all that's combined, squirt in about a teaspoon of oil and coat that well, and set it aside for at least 15 minutes to marinate. For this particular stir-fry, we'll be frying that pork together with 100 grams of chilies. We live in China, so these are Sichuan Argentiao chilies, but feel free to use whatever is convenient and tasty where you live. Julienne some poblanos, anaheims, jalapenos, green bell peppers, really whatever. For aromatics, we've got an inch of ginger, smash it, julienne, then get it into a fine mince, and two cloves of garlic, smashed, julienned, and gotten into a fine mince. And now, to stir fry. So a nice first step to a stir fry is a technique called long yao, or hua guo in Mandarin. It's a restaurant technique that'll get you a nice slippery frying surface. In restaurants, before frying, they'll heat their wok till it's super hot, add in some oil, swirl it around, and drain it into a dedicated side oil bowl. We know that most people don't keep an extra oil bowl lying around their kitchen, so instead, we like to get our wok piping hot, about steak searing temperature, shut off the heat, add in the oil we need to fry in, so here about two tablespoons, and give it a swirl to get a nice nonstick surface. So with your flame on high now, toss in the marinated pork slivers. Break them apart with some chopsticks, cause slivers tend to clump, and fry for about one minute until 90% done. This step-by-step -step stir fry helps ensure that each ingredient is perfectly cooked, so once the color's visibly turned, set that aside. Now do another long yell with about one or two tablespoons of oil, and immediately after finishing, toss in the garlic and the ginger over the same high heat. You want to add your aromatics basically seconds after adding the oil or else they can burn on you. After about 15 seconds, pour a tablespoon of liaojiu or your wine of choice over your spatula and around the sides of the wok. This will cool everything down, so quick mix and go in with the chilies. Fry this for about 30 seconds, then add back the pork. Quick 15 second fry, then season with a teaspoon of soy sauce and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Give it a brief toss if you can, shut off the heat, and drizzle in a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. Quick mix, and out. Pork and chilies, done. Now, suppose you don't own a wok. I like woks, and so should you, but you can still stir fry without one. This is a 28 centimeter nonstick wok, which is basically a glorified nonstick skillet. This is all more or less the same, only no need to really do that whole long yao routine. 
Just heat stuff up like you're used to, high heat, and add in the oil. Pork in, same one minute fry, and reserve. Then with the flame back on high, swirl in a touch of cool oil and toss in the aromatics. 15 second fry, then swirl in that Liaozhou wine. This will annoyingly be kind of messy, which is why woks are better. Toss in your sliced chilies, fry that for about 45 seconds. Tossing will help the pan cook more evenly, but it does take a touch longer. Then go in with your pork and fry for about 30 seconds. Then season with your teaspoon of soy sauce and quarter teaspoon of salt. Quick toss, heat off, teaspoon toasted sesame oil, brief mix, and out. No wok, same exact thing, just a bit more kitchen to scrub down after. Now, if you've ever eaten on the street in China, usually you'll find that vendors don't cook in stages, but instead do everything in one pot. Still dead simple to execute. Same exact method as stir-frying that pork, but once it's about 80% finished, scooch it up the side of the wok. Add in a touch of cool oil, aromatics in, fry for about 15 seconds, then mix everything together. Add your wine over the spatula and around the sides of the wok, chilies in, 30 second fry, seasoning in, quick toss, heat off. Sprinkle in your sesame oil, give it a mix, and out. Finally, let's talk the deep frying method. This technique is also called passing through oil. It's a go-to method for restaurants and makes for super juicy, tender meat. For this one, we'll also crack half an egg white into the marinade, which further tenderizes our pork. Egg white marinades tend to stick to the wok if you're using one of the previous methods, but work brilliantly while deep frying. So in a round bottom wok, get a cup or so of oil up to 180 centigrade and toss in the marinated pork. Fry that for about 20 seconds. Round bottom woks are awesome for deep frying, but you could also use a little more oil and shallow fry in a pan instead. Pour out the oil and reserve the pork. Now I figure some of you might want to know how to add a sauce to your stir fry, so let's make one real quick. To three tablespoons of water, add in a half teaspoon stock concentrate, or alternatively just use stock if you got some on hand. Add in your seasoning, so here that was our quarter teaspoon salt and our teaspoon of soy sauce. Then in a separate bowl, make a slurry of a half tablespoon cornstarch and just enough water to let it come together, about one teaspoon. If you want a saucier stir fry, add more stock and cornstarch. If you just want to touch a touch of sheen, add less. So go through the motions just like we did before, but when you'd add the seasoning, lower the flame to medium and add the sauce instead. Quick mix, then go in with the slurry. And once that's thickened up, about 15 seconds, take it out. Ching jiao rosa, done. So I want to talk a little bit about wok hei. Uh, people seem to be obsessed about it. Um, it's a Cantonese term and I'm Cantonese. I like it. When you go out to certain restaurants, some dishes do have it. It's great. But wok hei is not prerequisite to a stir fry. People stir fry at home all the time with that wok hei. So check out the link in the description box for a detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.